Hey guys, Jeff Cannellweed here. I've had a bunch of you ask me, how do I like this fork? So let's do it. Welcome to the Ride Report. A few months ago, Dave Weagle shot me a note and said, hey Jeff, would you be interested in trying out the Trust Performance Fork? And of course I said yes. Dave's the fellow who designed the suspension kinematics on every single Ibis bike that I've ridden. And he also designed the Iron Horse Sunday, a bike I used to race downhill on a long time ago. And all those bikes rode really, really well. With the chance to have a DW link essentially on the front of my bike, as well as on the rear, I figured this could be a really cool thing to try. I also thought it was just cool how Dave and his whole team of Hap and Jason, they were thinking outside of the box with this whole idea of a dynamic offset fork. Fork offset is the distance from the steering head angle that the front axle is positioned. The idea behind this fork is to reduce the offset as the fork cycles through its travel. Trail is the difference between the steering head angle and a vertical line dropped through the front axle. The amount of trail on a bicycle will determine how quickly or how slowly this handles. This means a really large trail measurement will have a very slow and stable handling feel, whereas a shorter trail measurement will make for a more nervous, twitchy handling bike. The confusing part of this is that it's an inverse relationship between fork offset and trail. The shorter the fork offset, the bigger the trail measurement. As a conventional telescoping fork cycles straight through its travel, its offset stays exactly the same. And as the bike pivots from the rear axle to the head tube there and goes down, the head angle gets drastically steeper. With the fixed 44 millimeter offset, as the head angle steepens from 64 to 71 degrees, the trail measurement shrinks by almost 50% creating a bike that's half as stable. This right here is my winter HD4. I don't worry if it's too crusty and muddy. My scientific method, I've taped a pen directly into the dropout. Bottoming this fork results in a straight line that is exactly consistent with the bike's head tube angle. It's basically the head angle the entire way through the travel. A couple days before flying out to Tucson for the first local loam video, this fork showed up and I posted the unboxing video. Fast forward a day or two and we're landing in Tucson, Arizona. I still haven't ridden this fork on dirt. We drive straight to the trailhead and meet up with Ty Hathaway. You can see my initial first ride with Ty with the new fork right here in the video that I'm linking to in the YouTube card. During the rest of the Tucson Local Loam episode, I was super happy with the fork. I flew home for like a day, but there was so much snow on the trails I couldn't ride, and then flew directly to Austin, Texas, like 24 hours after getting back from Tucson. Now in Austin, the fork worked really well. I had a great time with it. All the big jumps and stuff, it totally soaked it all up just fine. Now, once the snow is finally melted and the trails are drying out a little bit, I did get a couple rides in on this setup here in Bellingham on trails I'm very familiar with.
Thus far, I've ridden the Trust Message Fork in Austin, Texas, Tucson, Arizona, all over Puerto Rico. I've ridden it in California and here in Washington. So it's been ridden in five different places. I've ridden it in Sedona, Arizona too. I've learned a few things about what it does really well and where a traditional fork might have a slight advantage. This setup behind me here is a rough test to figure out what the axle path of the Trust Fork looks like. That must be bottom out right there. Okay, let's see what we got. Here's our rough axle path. We'll try that again, see if we can get it a little bit smoother. Take this with a grain of salt. But let's check and get a rough idea how much the offset has been reduced by. This says approximately 30 millimeters. So the distance that it is, moves back from here to here, that's the change in fork offset. So if you notice, the axle path kind of looks like a J. It moves backwards initially, then starts to move up quite a bit. This is cool for a couple of reasons. So first off, at top out, it looks like the fork offset could be close to 50-ish millimeters. So my HD4 had a 66 head angle with the short fork on the front, and it handles really lively. It's a very nimble bike, it feels great. The magic really starts to happen as you hit the bigger obstacles. As you get deeper in the travel, the offset shrinks. This ends up increasing the trail measurement and makes the bike handle with more stability. This means it's less sketchy when you hit gnarly stuff. Using my extremely rough measurement of 30 millimeters of offset reduction on the trust message, this means that initial ride height would be a 99 millimeter trail measurement. Then at bottom out, this would actually be the same at around 100 millimeters. This means the bike would be just as stable at bottom out as it would be at top out and that creates the really consistent and very good feel of the trust fork. If you're having a hard time understanding all this, which is very easy, it's lots of numbers and terms and all that, think about downhill bikes. They have real slack head angles. Your front wheel's way out there. Well, the reason why downhill bikes have that is so that they can have a really big trail measurement. They want that 125 or 130 millimeter trail. Now that big trail measurement does a really good job of making the bike handle well at speed. It's very, very stable. A traditional telescoping fork is stuck doing the opposite. Your trail measurement actually gets smaller as you cycle through the travel because the offset is fixed. And as the head angle gets steeper, that then reduces the trail number. So a telescoping fork will always feel sketchiest as you're closest to bottom out. People ask me if this fork is supposed to be anti-brake dive, and honestly, I've never had an issue with brake dive with any fork I've ever ridden my whole life. If people refer to brake dive as simply panic braking with the front brake, it's kind of poor riding technique and any fork's gonna compress if you just hop on the front brake initially. Now, lots of folks wanna know what the truss fork feels like to ride. And well, it's a short travel fork. It's 130 millimeters of contour travel. So if we do a little bit of trigonometry, it's about 115 millimeters of vertical travel. Comparing that to the 36, 160 I had on her earlier, I've gone down almost 30 millimeters in travel with this fork compared to the traditional telescoping unit. So the fork feels great when you charge into rocks. Anytime you've got an actual obstacle that you're hitting, it's gonna push that wheel backwards and into that J-shaped axle path. There's gonna be a ton of forgiveness, so you're not gonna lose speed or control when you smash that kind of stuff. As you get deeper into the travel, your mechanical advantage against the spring goes down a bit, so that it ends up becoming a more progressive design. I've actually had the guys install a bunch more bottom out tokens in this fork and the difference is slightly noticeable, but I haven't had a huge problem with bottoming the fork more than I would have expected. Now, I'll be very honest here. I've talked to a few folks who have tried this fork out and they just didn't understand what the appeal was and they thought it was really harsh on small hit. I really like this fork in the desert, in rocky conditions. It feels like it has more than only 130 mils of travel. It doesn't feel like it has 170 or 160, but it's definitely more capable than the last 130 mil travel fork I rode. The last time I rode a 130 travel fork, it was on the Ibis DB9 hardtail. And it's actually from a, another sponsor of mine, Fox supports me with rear suspension. And that was a Fox 34 130. And honestly, 130 travel, it can do a lot of things, but it's not that much travel in the first place. This does feel a bit more capable in the chunder, in the roots and in the rocks compared to that traditional 130 fork. And then on the bigger hits, it feels a lot more stable as you get down deeper into the travel. Now, one thing I do wanna mention, if you're going at a slower speed and you're hitting some flatter drops, like a bunch of roots on a downhill, which are normally more of a hole after a tiny little bump, that's not the best instance for this fork's application. 
Because this fork needs a bit of an impact to compress into the travel, when it's just stepping down, it's not going to compress as far as, say, a traditional telescoping fork would. For me, this hasn't been a huge issue. I tend to really hit things pretty hard, so I often get the fork into the back part of its travel. I was originally worried that these bigger huck to flats that I do in my videos would just be hard on my wrists, but Honestly, hits that big, get the fork into the back part of its travel without really any issue. One other thing I've noticed too, if your riding style is to keep your wheels on the ground and you end up smashing through some stuff, this fork would work great for you. Service intervals are huge, 250 hours, small bump sensitivity when you actually push in the right direction, it's super good. The fork stiffness fore aft is incredible. And I think a big part of that is to help control the offset. A traditional fork can flex a ton when you hop on the front brake. I'd say it's stiffer than even a 36 in that plane. I do think the fork's a little bit softer than a 36 when it comes into torsional stiffness, which is kind of nice on the off camber sections. At the same time, I'd say it's a tad stiffer than a 34, so give and take. On the really steep sections of trail, this fork walks all over a telescoping fork. Now you have to be on a real steep trail, but once you find that steep trail, once you start smashing into things, that rearward axle path really works to your advantage. And we haven't even gotten to G outs and berms yet. So holy cow, this setup is rad in those instances. When you hit those high impact areas of trail, your bike feels more in control rather than less in control. I've grown to really like that feel. Now, the way it has that stability, but when the fork is not pushed that hard, the bike is super nimble, it creates both fun handling and good confidence when trails get gnarly. I really like that. There are a few barriers to entry on this fork. The looks on the internet are a little bit polarizing, but in person, the fork looks rad. I'm not kidding. So the deal is that when you look at this from the side, the angle is different than what we've always seen and it looks kind of odd. But in real life, you look at this thing and it looks burly. There's also the price of the fork. It's not cheap, but you know what? It's very new and very innovative. And if you wanna really push the envelope, you're gonna be one of the early adopters to try this thing out. If I was building up a short travel bike, I would definitely prefer this fork over a telescoping unit. And if I'm building up a bike that has a steeper head angle, then this would be a great option. As that head angle gets steeper, that rearwards axle path is gonna come a little bit more vertical and the fork will probably perform better. If you wanna learn more about the Trust Fork, I have a link in the YouTube description below over to Trust Performance. If you click through there, take a look at their site, you can learn all about them and you can order forks directly from them. I do not earn any kind of commissions or anything like that if you do purchase through Trust. It's just they sponsor me and that's it. I have been stoked to ride this fork for the last couple months and I can't wait to keep shredding onto it this summer. It's been fun hanging out, talking about bikes. If you like this video, click that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the trail.